Hello everyone, welcome to problem 2.33 of David Griffith's Electrodynamics. So this problem states that we have an infinite line of point charges that alternate sine of plus and minus q, and it's all strung out along the x-axis. A distance a um, from, you know, each charge is a distance a from its neighbors. It wants us to find the work um, per particle required to assemble this system. And it gives us this sort of partial answer and tells us that this constant alpha in the answer is is uh, called the Madelon constant and it wants us to find what that number alpha is for this arrangement of charges. So I've kind of drawn this situation out here. So we have this is going to be the center charge, quote unquote, you know, the charges extend to infinity in both directions and it just alternates sine. So Q minus Q, Q minus Q, Q minus Q. So let's think about if we want to find the work per particle, um, like if we wanted to bring another particle in and stick it at the end of uh, this configuration, then we need to know what the total potential is of this configuration and what the work is to, um, to assemble this uh, configuration. Um, so anyways, the potential of a point charge we know is just Q over four pi epsilon naught and then the distance to the point that we're uh, trying to find the potential at. So, you know, when there's, if we picture trying to assemble this configuration from scratch, we would bring in, let's start with the plus Q. We would bring in one charge plus Q and there's no other charges that exist except that charge yet. So there is no work or required. There's no potential existing yet. So there would be no work required, there's no potential, you know, so we just have that first plus Q charge um, here. Now we want to pull in, uh, you know, if we, if we wanted to know, okay, what's the potential? Let's, let's forget about all the left hand charges. Let's just think about adding charges infinitely to the right. If we wanted to know what's the potential at this point, a distance A from Q, um, well, that would just be Q over four pi epsilon naught A. That's the potential that this charge Q makes here. If you wanted to know what the potential is that uh, that is created here, then um, by once you have uh, these two charges already, um, you would have to add up the potentials uh, that this charge creates here, uh, this charge creates here, and and so on. And so um, what you would sort of end up with is um, you know, the work to pull in a charge uh, minus Q here would just be um, the potential created by this charge times the charge you're pulling in. So it would be minus Q squared over 4 pi epsilon A would be the work required to pull in this charge here. The work to qu required to pull in um, a charge at 2A would be Q squared over 4 pi epsilon naught times 2A um, plus the uh, work required to act against this charge um, and what you would sort of get is an infinite sum um, with an alternating sign because each charge sort of alternates sign and you can represent this infinite sum uh, by this sort of sum here so what you would have is this q squared over 4 pi epsilon a 4, 4 pi epsilon a because those are the common factors of every term and you're sort of summing you know I'm only considering adding charges to the right. You're summing from, you know, some index n to infinity, and I have this minus one to the n, um, which just makes the 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 one the negative one sort of alternate sign here. So that just gives us the alternating negative sign because when n is zero, you get positive one. When n is one, you get negative one. When n is two, you get uh, positive one, and so on. And then I just have one over n here because um, this essentially is giving us the, you know, if n is zero, we just get zero. If n is one, we get one A. If n is two, we get two A. If n is three, we get three A, which is the distances from the, the starting point, the center to each charge. And essentially what the sum looks like is Q squared over four pi epsilon A. And you could write this as uh, one minus one half plus one third minus one fourth 
and it just kind of keeps going like that, you know, plus one fifth, minus one sixth, all the way up to infinity. And so that's sort of what, uh, that's this sort of uh, summation here, this infinite summation gives us um, what the work is um, to assemble or, or what the work would be to the work per particle, I would say, um, required to assemble the system. So if we want to know what the total work would be, well, because what the summation is is adding charges to the right only, but we also have an infinite sum of charges to the left, which would be the same sort of argument. The summation would be exactly the same, just in the other direction. So it would just be the same as multiplying that summation by two. And that would give you what the total uh, work to assemble that system would be in both directions, just multiplying the summation by two because it, it, the, the, the summation is the same both ways. So it's just double that summation. And so you get two q, q squared over four pi epsilon a times the summation from n to infinity um, times negative one to the n over n, which again, I've kind of written that out here just a couple terms. Um, and yeah, so that's what the, the work per particle is to assemble this kind of system. Now, to figure out what this constant alpha is, we were, it's kind of a tough thing. Um, if you have any experience with Taylor series, um, then this is where that would come in handy. So what this infinite summation is, um, it's essentially a Taylor series of some function, which uh, is actually the function is the Taylor series of the natural log of one plus x. And I kind of went through and, and sort of derived what the Taylor series expansion of one, the natural log of one plus x is, um, by just using the definition of the Taylor series and expanding around the origin. So A is zero in this case, if you know anything about Taylor series. So this would, I think that's what, if A is zero, I think that's a Maclaurin series. Um, but, you know, I just kind of went through and, and found some of the terms. Um, the natural log of one plus X would be something like C naught, which C, these are the coefficients of the X. So it'd be like C naught plus C one times x plus c2 times x squared, et cetera, et cetera. And you have to find what these coefficients are. And these coefficients are given by, um, there's a formula for them. And so the first coefficient is natural log of one, which is zero. The first coefficient is, um, I think one. And you know I'm evaluating this stuff at the origin because that's what we're expanding the Taylor series around. And what, uh, and then I get negative uh, one half for the second coefficient, and the third coefficient would be a positive one third. And so you could find that, and you would get that the Taylor series matches exactly this, except for the fact that we have, you know, x, x squared, x cubed. So in this case, to make it match this, instead of, you know, if x were one, then this series would match. So really, what this Taylor series is, is not the natural log of one plus X, but it's the natural log of one plus one, where X is one uh, in this case. And that would make it match exactly. So the natural log of one plus X is this Taylor series, X minus one half X squared plus one third X cubed minus one fourth X to the fourth. If X is one, then all those X's just go to, it's just one. And we get exactly our Taylor series that, or our series that we saw before. And so, that makes it the natural log of two. And so our answer, our work per particle becomes two Q squared over four pi epsilon A times the natural log of two, where that series that we had before, the summation here is actually the Taylor series expansion for the, for the natural log of two. And so this constant here, natural log of two, is that alpha um, constant that, um, was a part of the that the 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 original question was asking about so um i hope this sort of makes sense um it's a bit of a tricky problem um but if you guys do have any questions please feel free to let me know down in the comments below i will try my best to answer all of them and yeah that's about it
Uh, thank you guys for watching, and have a great day.